Okay, so we're going to look at the difference between linear speed and angular speed. So what we're talking about with this formula here is we know that if we have our circle and we have a radius and then we go some certain distance, we know from our formula that our arc length formula that s equals r theta. Of course, we have an angle theta here. So this gives me length, which means that this is actually going to be measured in length per time. And then, of course, the time that it actually takes to go that distance is what we're calling time. So the big difference in this case is this is going to be measured in length per Time, like feet per second. In this case, I'm more interested in the angle, and this is when I use this for things that I want to be able to do radians, and then for time. So, for example, if I'm doing, when we get into trig formulas, and I need my speed to be in radians, then I would like this formula. Now, there's a nice little relationship between these two that by using this for my linear speed is my s remember is r theta well as you can see that little dip was to make sure I'm still on screen as you can see this is my omega my linear or my angular speed I'm sorry and so it's kind of a little shortcut and you'll see on many of the problems typically this angular speed is easiest to find so you have a problem that says that you have a ferris wheel kind of looks like a ferris wheel huh <laughs> maybe not and it says that the radius here is 30 feet and you're told, looking at my cheat sheet over here, that it does one revolution in 70 seconds. And it wants you to find linear and angular speed. Well, as I mentioned, sometimes it's easier to find the angular speed first. So I'm going to do that down here, which again, I can see that what's what's given to me here is this theta t. Well, the problem is, is the information that I have, I actually need to get this converted. So I know that there's one revolution per 70 seconds, right? And this, once again, was information that was given to me. Well, what I want to be able to do is I want to change this into radians because up here, this is actually going to be in radians per, in this case, second. Well, if you remember, one revolution going all the way around the circle, let's just use this one, is 360 degrees. And if I want to convert that to radians, remember what we did? Pi over 180. If I multiply that, 180 goes into 360 two times, and I get 2 pi. So this is why you're multiplying it by 2 pi radians, because that gets replaced for one revolution. In other words, one revolution is, all the way around, is 2 pi radians. And so, of course, I throw this into a calculator, and I get 0 0.09 radians per second. Well, now that I have this, it's certainly a lot easier to find my linear speed because my linear speed, trying to see a place I can write this, so my linear speed is my S over T, but this formula is a lot faster because I already know the radius is 30, and I just found that piece. So I end up and I get my answer as 2.7. But think about this, if my radius is in feet, 
then this answer is in feet per second. So these are giving you two different things as far as unit-wise, but they're still the same thing. In this case, unit-wise, my angular speed is going to be in radians per second. This one, my linear speed, is going to be a measurement in feet per second. Think angle, angular, right? Linear, this is where we're using our feet. So hopefully that clears this up, and then if you have to do any other type calculations to switch uh, back to revolutions per second, like if they asked you how many revolutions per second, then you would just undo it, right? You'd divide by 2 pi, like the ones we did in class. But in this case, this just shows you straight the difference between linear is going to be measured in length per time, and then my angular is going to be measured in radians per time.